Um, I, I don't think that miracles violate the laws of nature. I think that's a misconception again about what the laws of nature do. They describe patterns of re regular patterns of occurrence in the physical world, but there is with a law of nature always a ceteris paribus clause, all other things being equal. In particular, a clause that says, regard, uh, provided there is no interfering conditions. So if I were to um, uh, analyze the movement of billiard balls on a, on a, a table, or pool table, I guess, and I know the law of momentum exchange, and I know the initial conditions that are in play, you know, what the force is when ball A hits ball B at angle X, I can predict the outcome as a physicist, in theory at least. But if when the, when the cue strikes the ball, somebody shakes the table, then all bets are off. That doesn't mean the law of momentum exchange has been violated. It means that someone has introduced into that physical system a new, a new causal, a chain of cause and effect. And I, I think biblically miracles are conceived of as acts of God, acts of a personal agent. In the Exodus account, it says that, the, and the Lord caused an east wind to blow. Now, it may not be the ordinary thing for walls of water to stand up, but a sufficiently strong force, uh, even produced by wind, might be possible, might, might be capable of doing that. In other words, but the, the philosophical point is My low-lying property on the bay will agree with that. Yeah, yeah, there, yeah, there okay. you go. But the, 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 the point is that if an agent acts in a otherwise closed physical system, you may, be, you may get unexpected outcomes without the laws that apply to that physical system being violated. So I think that and that argument and other arguments that I could make against, say, Hume's skeptical argument against miracles, uh, I think Hume's argument against miracles is incredibly weak. Um, but anyway, I don't think there are good, in principle, philosophical reasons to reject the possibility of miracles. Miracles are fundamentally acts of God. They are impossible if there is no God to act. The prior probability of miracles on, on given scientific materialism is zero. But if the, you have good reasons for believing in God, then the probability shifts to non-zero. And you have to evaluate the historical evidence itself to see whether or not it suggests that a, a miracle took place. And in, in my case, without going into all the details, I have had a deep dive into some of the the, the great scholars who exa have examined the historical evidence surrounding the, the resurrection, um, and I would name four, Wolfhart Pannenberg, um, his student, William Lane Craig, um, Gary Habermas, and N.T. Wright. Uh, and uh, Habermas has some extraordinarily persuasive videos online. Uh, N.T. Wright wrote the magisterial 700-page volume, um, The Resurrection of the Son of God. And I, I think that... Uh, Is that the gold standard, would you well, say? Well, I think they're all... I mean, they're Craig's all, they're work, all the Craig's, same. Craig's PhD dissertation, which cost me $150, you know, it's probably Edwin Mellon Press, I remember when I got it. You know, it's, it's a fantastic piece of work. So um, they're, they're all very... I mean, there's some very profound scholarship on this. And there's two different ways of arguing for the resurrection. One is called the minimal facts argument, another called the maximal facts argument. I actually think they both work. I mean, I think the historical evidence is surprisingly strong when you get into it.